everyone, in this video I want to talk about art improvement, things that I have done to improve my drawing skills, things that I still continue to do to this day, and I think they're things that most people would find useful um, in improving their own art. So as you can see I'm redrawing a piece that I, I think that was about three years ago and it was my first attempt at Photoshop. I didn't know how to use Photoshop at all, I like, didn't have any formal training. I looked up some videos on YouTube, some tutorials, and then I just went from there. I just did whatever I could at the time with the knowledge that I had, which wasn't a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I decided that I would draw it again in my new style, um, which has changed quite a lot, <laughs> as you can see and I thought I would just talk about the things that I have done in those three years um, and hopefully they will help you guys. So the first thing is, I'm just going to get this one out of the way because everyone says it and it's one of the main things, it's just the practice. Um, you can't substitute practice really for anything, it's just, it's just building up mileage. Um, you should draw every day, every single day if you can. Um, it doesn't have to be anything huge or, or detailed, it doesn't have to be anything that take, takes hours, it's just even five minutes is better than doing nothing. So really try not to make excuses, I mean I used to always make excuses and be like oh I'm really busy and I just don't have time for it, I'll, I'll, I'll do something tomorrow, but then I would feel really I feel really bad about myself because I knew I was making excuses. There is always time in the day, sometime. Even if you just don't watch that TV program that you watch, or just turn off your computer, whatever, just for five minutes, just try and get some sort of, you know, doodle in there, or a scribble, or just do a, a quick, I don't know, just draw something that you see in your room, or just anything. Um, just make sure you keep practicing. It's it's no different than, I don't know, like learning to drive. At the beginning it's really daunting, but the more practice you get, the more confident you become in your ability. Uh, the second thing is to do studies and do a lot, of, a lot of them. You know, study other artists. I mean, I'm not just talking about the, the old masters and I mean, study the, the newer artists, the ones that inspire you now as well. I mean, there's, there's so much to be learned by studying the techniques of others. If you just even look at the way they colour uh, their drawings or, you know, like with their brush strokes or their pencil strokes, depending if it's digital or traditional, and, and see if you can replicate that. And, and if you can, and when, when you do replicate it, that means you can understand the process that they went through which then in turn will help you when you're doing your own drawings and paintings your own way. Um, and on that note, experiment with styles. Uh, try different things to try and step out of your, your comfort zone. It's very easy to just keep drawing the same thing over and over in your, let's say, your current style. And you don't even know if that is what you want to be drawing, you know, you just you're just drawing it because that's what you know right now but I mean if you don't experiment then you won't know so that's what I mean by if you're looking at other artists I mean there's so many different styles out there when you're doing studies you are you are kind of drawing in in that style so there's no harm in, in, in experimenting with it and it just gives you a different outlook and, and point of view to your work um, Another thing is to try and draw from real life and from references. I mean, I talked about references in my last video and how important it is to draw from them. Um, it's incredibly hard to draw accurately from your memory. And the more you draw inaccurately, the likely, more likely it will be to pick up bad habits and constantly drawing something that you think is right, but it isn't right. So if you draw from life, like if you go out and draw like landscapes or people draw like, you know, watching people and drawing them, or even if, you know, if you can't do that, you just 
you know you draw from references on you know photo references you're learning you're building up your visual library and you're learning how things should be drawn correctly and the other thing um, which I mentioned at the beginning is tutorials there are so many tutorials out there now and they're so easy to access there's so many guides um, like I said I pretty much completely taught myself how to use Photoshop from tutorials on YouTube and there are there are so many I, I'll try and link um, some of the ones that I think are really useful um, but yeah not just not just YouTube but I mean if you know there's books there's a lot of books out there too um, and I'll, I'll link some of those that I think are really really good but yeah I mean there's a, there's a lot of free resources out there so do try and look for them and do use them because there are so many people out there with really great knowledge and also who are really great at um, explaining things so that's definitely a really great way of um, learning new things um, do gesture drawings um, so gesture drawings are pretty much getting the action and the flow of a figure so it, it basically helps to cut back on the detail and just focus on the form and trying to get some personality into a pose so it's very easy and it's something I did um, quite a lot before to try and what I was doing I was kind of outlining um, the figure and it was very stiff really really rigid and it didn't look right um, and I think at the beginning of this video I think I was doing a gesture drawing and it took me a few tries because the the pose wasn't right but it's much easier to do quick you know the line of action and then just putting in the quick shapes it's much quicker to do that than to draw out your outline of, of you know a person and then realize oh my god that's really boring <laughs> So, um, yeah, try and look at the, the body as, you know, a line and shapes rather than the outline. Just try and be, you know, view it in a more abstract way um, and it'll automatically look much better and look like has more life to it. Um, another thing and, you know, it's not that important, but I found it made a difference to my, to my art and it's different art supplies. Um, try different art supplies if you can it's but it, it, it is all about finding the right things for you it doesn't have to be the most expensive brand and um, what works for someone else might not work for you but um, yeah it's I, I, I was using um, just copy paper for a lot of the things at the beginning and obviously that doesn't really work for things like markers um, so I found that changing my paper made a huge difference um, when it came to certain drawings and especially portraits so I, I changed to Bristol board or Bristol paper whatever you want to call it and that made a huge difference to things like portraits to get in smooth finish so you, you should try and experiment with different different types of supplies um, Obviously that's a money issue too, I mean you don't have to, it's not going to dramatically improve the way you draw, it just improves maybe the finish of how your pictures look. Um, and it's the same with uh, digital art as well I think, uh, try different programs. I use Photoshop now but at the beginning I did try uh, Paint Tool Sci and it's a great program but I'm, I'm using Mac, a Mac at the moment so that's why I stick to Photoshop but at least with digital you, there's a lot you know most of them come with trials so you, you don't actually have to buy it until you've tried it so definitely try different things don't be scared to try these different things and just stick to the one thing you know um, another thing is to draw the things you love and not the things you think will make you popular you have to be really honest with yourself and your art. If you're drawing for popularity, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. It's much easier to draw when it's something that genuinely interests you. And I think this is something I see quite a lot on Instagram. 
where I see people drawing things like oh, social media dresses, social media, I don't know, cupcakes, <laughs> social media birds, like, I mean, personally, I mean, this is my opinion, that's not interesting. And I don't feel like the people who are drawing those are doing it because they love to draw social media things, they're drawing it because they want to be popular. And I don't think you're going to improve. Like, I personally don't think you'll improve if you're drawing something that isn't something you genuinely love. For me, it's um, the things I love are things like fan art. I mean, I, I love everything, but I love to draw those things because that's what I find interesting. And when you are drawing the things you love, you will get better because you're actually enjoying it. So yeah, just be honest with yourself in what you draw and it, it, will, it will become easier and you will find you will improve better. Um, I think the last thing is stop comparing your art to other people. Um, it's a big one and it's the hardest, I think it's the hardest thing to do out of all of them because I, even I still do it, you know, you'll see a different artist, you'll see, you'll see that art now and you just be like, wow, <laughs> I wish I could be that good. Everyone does it, even the best artists still do it. I think the most important thing is stop putting artists on a pedestal. And what I mean by that is don't put them up there and think that it's an, an impossible thing to do. Yes, be inspired by them but don't think it's an out of reach dream, like it, you can never reach that and you know, they're some sort of God or whatever. It's not like that. Those people are there for a reason. They're at that quality and that level because they have done all the things that I have mentioned before, like practicing and studying and experimenting and just constantly going and trying hard to get to the level that they're at. And that's what everyone needs to do and everyone can do it. Um, I know it's difficult when you see these extremely popular artists, but it's really not healthy to try and compare yourself to the people who already have years of experience. Don't worry about other people and just concentrate on yourself where you are here and now. And just try hard to get better for yourself, you know. Um, be kind to yourself. Allow yourself to just have a pat on the back sometimes when you've done something that you're really proud of. Just just be kind to yourself because it's the easiest way to quit is when you compare yourself to other people and you don't feel good enough. Um, so that's, that's a really important thing to do, one of the hardest things to do, but definitely just stop comparing your art to other people. Okay, anyway, that's the end of the video and hopefully you found this interesting. Um, I'm pretty sure most of it, you know, you've heard it all before. But those are the things that I honestly think have helped me to improve. Um, so thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.